Hi everyone, my name is Nikki and I'm a member of our solutions consulting team here at Iterable. Today I'm going to walk you through why segmentation is such an important part of your marketing strategy. A big part of marketing today is getting the right messaging to the right group of users. And when your users feel like content is highly relevant and tailored to them, they're much more likely to trust your brand, resulting in a longer relationship with your consumers and also more ROI from these relationships. And the best way to actually build trust and increase the length of your relationship with your consumers is by collecting and acting upon the relevant data about them. So for all of your consumers, it's helpful to know who they are and what they're doing so that your messaging can actually reflect that. In an ESP like Iterable, the data is collected and stored in a way that is easy for marketers to use and act upon. And in my screen right now, you can see that there's a series of dropdowns and criteria that I've already built out. And we're going to look at these through the lens of a hypothetical e-commerce company that has this drop off when someone makes a first purchase um, where they make that first purchase and they don't tend to come back. So because that's a huge point of drop off for this company, they want to work on re-engaging users to make a second purchase. And the group of users that they've identified as being the right group of people for their message is going to be people that maybe have items in their shopping cart, they've come back to the website to browse, um, but they've also been highly engaged with emails and their marketing campaigns in general, and they've made a previous purchase. So they want to make sure that everyone they're re-engaging fits these criteria. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at how these criteria are actually built out based on this data that we're collecting about the users for this e-commerce company. There are three types of data that we're really looking at here. And like I had mentioned previously, we're looking at who these users are and what they're doing in general. So you can see this first criteria centers on something called a contact property. This is going to be something about this user that we're storing on their profile. So for example, um, we have shopping cart items. When someone goes back to that e-commerce site, add something to their cart, that's going to be set as a shopping cart item on their profile. So really all we're checking here is to make sure that that's set. And now we have everyone who's come back, they've been re-engaged a little bit, they know that they want something, but they haven't quite purchased it yet. This next criteria centers on a purchase. So you'll notice here that this user must have a purchase, but we also want to make sure that the purchase date is on or before now minus 30 days. This relative date of now minus 30 days essentially means that for any time period, any rolling time period, whether we're sending this campaign today or a month from now, the time period that we're always looking at is the previous 30 days. So you can define this criteria once and set it and forget it because whenever this list is used for a campaign, it's going to be the relevant 30 days to the campaign. And the reason that we have this cool down period of 30 days is because we don't want to annoy our consumers. We don't want to have someone that just purchased something last week get one of these re-engagement emails. So we're going to give them that 30 day cool down to make sure that when we do reach out to re-engage them, they are prepared to make another purchase. And finally, we're going to be looking at an email open. This email open is really just saying, did someone open our email at least five times? Um, and again, we're looking at that email open date and we're making sure that this email open, all five of them have happened within the last 30 days. And now by defining these criteria and running this query, what we're going to see is we're going to get this right group of users for this promotion or this special retargeting email that we're going to send out. Um, and because these are our most highly engaged users who've already made a purchase, they're much more likely to purchase something and we can drive more people to be sticky with our brand and have that lifelong relationship with us. And this screen that you're seeing here is really in the context of maybe a single campaign that we're sending as a batch and blast across maybe email, SMS, mobile push, or other channels. But we can also think of segmentation as being really important when we're defining more automated journeys that are occurring at scale. So if we take a look at a predefined journey or workflow that starts when someone makes a purchase, we're going to wait for 30 days and really similarly to the previous tab that I was in, we're going to have this step of the journey that does something that is mirroring what was happening in the segmentation page earlier. So we're going to do a bunch of really similar checks 
with very similarly built out criteria. And what this means is that no matter if it's just me entering the journey or if it's me and thousands of people, 10,000s, um, millions of people entering this journey, at this stage, we'll check for each and every user. Who are you? What have you done in our website? And how can we more relevantly tailor messaging to you as you move through this journey? So this is a way to take that concept of segmentation and apply it not only at the single campaign level, but at the level of your automated workflows so that each segment that you define is highly scalable for your entire marketing program. So now we've gone through um, segmentation both in the context of a batch and blast campaign or recurring campaign, anything that you're going to set up once and send it or set it and forget it. But now we've also seen how segmentation can be a powerful tool that you can use in your workflows or your automated journeys. Because the same check of do we know who these users are and what they're doing that you're doing for your batch and blast campaigns can also be affected on workflows. So as someone comes through that workflow, you can check, did they make a purchase? Do they have shopping cart items set? Um, have they opened a lot of our emails in the past 30 days and make the rest of the workflow that they go through more relevant to them based on that information. And now that we've seen that importance in both contexts, if you're interested in using segmentation as part of your marketing strategy, please feel free to reach out to any of our team members at Iterable. We'd be happy to walk you through it.